So what are some of the ways that you can market your restaurant if your restaurant is located in a small town? Now, the reason uh, I'm going over this is because now for one, Jonathan is somebody who sent uh, me a question uh, and, and you can do the same. If you have any suggestions or any tips or anything you'd like us to cover here on the show, you can go to uh you can send us an email to makingdoshow at gmail.com and I'd be happy to answer your question in a future episode. But Jonathan is asking how uh, they're in a small town and he was wondering what are some of the ways that he can market his business. The first point I was going to say is that marketing tips, marketing ideas, they work anywhere. And if you think that because you're in a small town, you're at a disadvantage, you need to shift that mindset. And think about the fact that your weaknesses, you need to turn them into your advantage. The fact that you're in a small town means that you don't have as many competitors as maybe a big town. So there are pros and cons to any circumstance, no matter if you're, say, your restaurant is at a, in a good road uh, and a very visible or it's not very visible. No matter the circumstance you're going through that you may hold and be like, you know, I have cash flow problems or my restaurant is not profitable because of this. You need to shift your shift your mindset, in my opinion. For one, you can't, you know, these are the cir- circumstances you're in. So Jonathan sent us an email saying how he's got problem with cash flow that um, he he's saying how they have, and I actually looked him up on Google, obviously, to check their uh uh, Google Plus or Yelp or whatever page or your, their social media checked it all as well. But so they have good reviews and the restaurant is clean. The staff is wonderful. And he's saying that they're not maybe doing enough marketing. They live in a small town of 6,000 people and there are 22 restaurants in the area. Another th- key thing that he's mentioned is the fact that in the summertime, which as I'm recording this, it happens to be very close to the summertime. It's a very touristic town. He's asking for my suggestions for the marketing, what it is that I suggest him doing. And today we're going to talk about five different things. And now you may be in a small town or not. These five tips will work for you. Um, no matter what kind of a restaurant you own and no matter where your restaurant is, these principles apply. And in fact, they're all free. Uh, all these five things that we're going to go over, which I'm very excited. And I hope that Jonathan chooses one of these things every week to improve upon. And I sure hope that uh, he makes a lot of dough. All right. Uh, this is me and my husband. We own a couple restaurants. My name is Hangum Stanfield. And uh, on this show, we're passionate about helping you grow your restaurant sales. Sales can cure a multitude of issues. Um, there are a lot of issues we deal with uh, in the restaurant business. A lot of unpredictable things, in fact, all the time. I mean, I don't know to say that, but if you have good sales, it can help. So that's one of my focus here on this show to help you crush your sales. You can find Making Dough Show on all of the podcast platforms. If you prefer to listen, you can find us on YouTube. We're also on Facebook. Uh, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss an episode. And uh, yeah, I would love to hear from you. Okay, first, now we're going to talk about ways that I feel Jonathan... Um, can grow his sales and turn his weakness into his strength. For one, if you're in a small town of a community, you already know your schools. You need to make sure that you are well known and you know everybody and everybody knows you in your town. Now, again, if you live in a small town, it is going to be easier to accomplish that than when you live in a bigger city. But that is one of our duties as restaurant owners, as managers, to be known and for others to know us. The more, the merrier, okay? So first, I want to go over with partnering with your local schools. There is many ways to do that. Hosting fundraisers is one. You want to be in good terms with your schools. Schools consist of parents, teachers who are also living in town in the three to five mile radius of your restaurant, and children who could love your food, right? So you need to build strategic partnerships with your schools. Okay, Jonathan, the first thing you can do is in the next, uh, maybe tomorrow, you can, uh, well, actually, it's almost summertime here, so the schools are closed. But one of the things you can do is uh, take some food to your local school, just complimentary food, say hello, shake hands with the principal, introduce yourself, and get to know them. And see if they're interested in hosting a fundraiser or a spirit night at your restaurant that you want to host an event for them, for instance. That's one of the easiest ways that you can start building uh relationships and strategic partnerships with your school. Another thing you can do, obviously, is always give give gift cards to the teachers, or you can give gift cards to the teachers to give to the top students. It could be a free kid's meal for all you care, right? It could be a free kid's meal, for instance. But partnering with your schools is 
very affordable and honestly it's one of our best method of um, growing our sales the second thing is taking in the same tone the same you know so you either going to give money to uh, a company like uh, sorry i can't move this guy so either you're gonna uh, give money to a company like facebook um, for marketing or wherever it is that you you want to do your marketing or you going to spend that marketing budget and food cost which is a much better thing for one it's more cost effective and it's effective because you're getting your food in people's mouths and there's nothing better than that it's more personal if in fact if you do it in person i talk about that on this show all the time so if i were you jonathan in fact that's the first thing i would do i would do it today i would and i know that you uh, serve wonderful coffee and you have gorgeous pastries you serve you can um, stop by your local businesses, the three to five mile radius, choose a few of them, stop by with some coffee and some pastry, get to know them. You can drop off your menu with them. Do you have some lunch specials you can talk about? But honestly, that's one of the easiest ways to build relationships and for, for instance, grow your lunch sales because people go out to lunch and those businesses live or those people live in three to five mile radius of your restaurant clearly they work at a three to five mile radius of your restaurant one of the things you always want to do is try to get catering orders when you work with businesses and or something recurring i know that there's a lot of companies that do even coffee like a membership so they come in and they bring coffee i think they bring a coffee machine i don't know if that would apply to you but think about can you bring them pastry every week can you bring them you know fridays you bring a meal always look for can you reduce your price but get a long-term bulk order that's um, always good the next thing you can do is you said that you especially in the summertime um there's a lot of tourists that come in your town that means you need to be best friends with your local hotels on their front desk. They need to know you. They need to recommend your restaurant because people who come into your town, they're going to be like, hey, what's something local? Where do you recommend we go? It's just a fact. It happens all the time, right? So you want to drop off some complimentary food at, at the front register uh, or front desk area of your local hotels, all of them that are in your small town. Again, you're a small town, so it's easy to do that. Divide and conquer go in there shake some hands introduce yourself get them some free food get to know them their names and try to remember that or write it down and ask if um you know is it possible for you to drop off some menus and you can also like even leave an exclusive offer for instance you want to have a 10 percent off for this particular hotel or a free appetizer or something like that that you can leave at the front um, desk area of the hotels that is if you are in a touristic town that is one of the best ways uh, for you to tap into the cold market the visitors that are coming into town the other one i wanted to tell you and i have uh, wanted to tell you jonathan is i particularly looked you guys up i looked up your restaurant it seems like you have a wonderful operations you know pictures of the food and the coffees and the decor seemed gorgeous uh, however i wanted to tell you that i the, you don't have your website linked to your Google Places account. Either you have a website or not, but you're not making it easy for a customer to see your menu, for instance, right? So let's talk about your Google Plus page, your Yelp and your TripAdvisor. When I looked up your restaurant, Yelp did not even come up. TripAdvisor did. So you need to make sure, I mean, it is, as I'm recording this, it's 2019. This is non-negotiable, friend. We gotta be having an online present. You know what I mean? It's just, you. there's no way around it. So first tip I have for you, when I went to your Google uh, Places page, it seemed like there was absolutely no description. The description of your restaurant, what's special about your restaurant and why should I come in? If it's a touristic place, I'm gonna look up where to go on Yelp, you know, all these tourists, right? You always, you do the same when you travel. I know that um, you guys' restaurant is in Canada, but I, I know that's what we do here, right? When we travel with our family, I look up on Google, I look up the reviews, I do look all the photos that are in that restaurant because I'm trying to identify a particular dish and a photo I can relate to and be like, oh, my kids would eat that, right? And so we could go there because I'm trying to look for something that it would appeal to my kids or it would appeal to our family, you know what I mean? So you wanna answer that question for your customers before they ask it. So the description you are, ultimately you need to utilize that for multiple things, two things in particular. One is SEO, you must use the 
name of your town in the description and you Google places also in Yelp, as well as anywhere that you have, you know, your Facebook page everywhere you, and also I looked up your Instagram, you guys have absolutely no description of what it is. One of the easiest ways to do that is you can have your spiel about, you know, what y'all are famous for since, since when y'all are open, you know, all of that, your story a little bit, and also be have a sentence like this serving families in x your town whatever it is serving families in austin since i don't care 2015 1888 i don't care whatever it is you know whatever it is serving families in is the name of the town because you need that for seo purposes or passionately serving um you know this town, this town, this town, whatever it is, your neighboring towns, if that's the case, use the name of the towns for SEO purposes. Again, in the description, you want to answer the, why should I try you out of 22 restaurants? We want to go out with our family. Why should I choose you? You need to answer that question that they're like, Hey, if you want to enjoy a, uh, a taste of blah, blah, blah is your town, right? If you want to try it, I'm just making it up, but like, um, you know, a, a local uh, favorite Austin joint for local coffee and homemade pastry. We're famous for our croissants that we make every morning at 4 a.m. that you have got to try if you're in town and blah, 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 something like that. You know, you get the point. I told you about the SEO, that you must use the name of your town. I see you guys are in Canada. If I were you, I know the tourists are going to be French speaking and English. Include both. That's what I would do if I were you. Also, you must add to your review sites the following. One, photos of every single dish. I see you have like seven to 10 photos of your food and a lot you're relying on what people upload. You as the owner can upload photos. We and our, for our restaurants, I'm going to say we have like probably 50 photos. A lot of them I've uploaded myself because I want to make sure that we have photos of our every single dish. Uh, we have photos of our entrance. You want to make sure you have photo because if cars are passing by, you want them to be able to, oh yeah, that place. You want to make it easy for them to later find your restaurant when they come check you out because they've seen a photo of your entrance. They know how it looks like. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the other one is you want a photo of maybe the inside of your restaurant. You want photos of your people. You want that person before they enter your restaurant for them to feel as though they know you because people do business with those they know, like, and trust. So the more information I have about your restaurant, the better I can be like, oh yeah, that is, seems to be a kid's kids friendly place. Hypothetically, right? You know, knowing depending on what your audience, who your audience is, but Answer as many questions as you can with your visuals because hypothetically I'm vegetarian or I'm gluten-free. I'm looking for options. And also with every photo, whether it's with Yelp or TripAdvisor and or Google Places, you can add a description. One of the things that annoys me is I see a photo of a food and I'm like, I want this, but I don't know what the name of this dish is. Or I wonder what is the content of this dish, right? So why don't you write the description, the title of each dish with the photo of the dish that you have, the title of the dish, as well as how you all make it. What's the ingredients kind of be more descriptive. You already have that information. If you have menu, you have a menu board or you have print menu, you already have this information somewhere. You know what I mean? Use that information in all of your review sites. Last tip I have for you is that again, I saw that you don't have a website. Friend, you need a website. You, you do. And people want to see your menu. One of the comments was something about your pricing. And the reason a comment comes up about pricing, and in a previous episode, I talked about how to increase the perceived value of your food. And it's because that's maybe what you're failing right now is for people to understand the value of the food or your experience that you're providing. Um, I'll have a link down below about that. Um, and then in the show notes that you can see that one as well. But you want to make sure people can see your menu. Your menu needs to have photos probably, and you need to be very descriptive in the way you experience uh, when you write your description of each dish in a manner that a person's saliva will go uh, increased. You know what I'm talking about when they are reading it, because you, you're writing it in a delicious manner. You know what I'm saying? That is very important. You must, talk about your story and what's special about your restaurant. If you have a basic website, it is very easy to include that. Now, in the meantime, if you're like, well, I don't have a website and by the time I get my website, you know, it's going to be one of the tips I have for you, friend, is that you can create Google posts. It is free. It is so easy. If you have a Google places, which you must, 
have that and hopefully you've claimed it. If not, we have to have a conversation about that. You can just search for Google posts. Google posts are like a blog post that are embedded within Google. Google is your first search engine. So your Google posts will come up first. If you're not going to create a website, you can create Google posts. It'll take you less than five minutes. You may have this barrier like, oh man, I don't figure one more thing. Friend, just look, Google it. Google this, you know, how to post them, you know, how to create a Google post, just search for Google post and you will see how easy it is. We get, um, thousands and thousands of views because Google sends me stats also generously tells me like 5,000 people saw this post because when people look up our restaurant, they're able to see these posts in the post. I strategically talk, talk about some of our prep. I have photos of our events that are coming up and all of that, which again, it's free. It's so easy to create. It, it's If you don't want to deal with technical issues, look up how to create Google posts. Okay. Remember that. One of the things you can do is if you have a menu, whether it's your menu board or you have print menus, take a photo of your menu and upload it onto your Yelp or Google Places, your TripAdvisor, all of the places. So someone can see your all offerings. What are you guys offering? Because a lot of people like variety because someone's like, well, I'm vegan. I'm looking for this particular something kids friendly for my kid. You know, you want to show the variety that you're able to carry for somebody to know, make it easy for them to make a decision as to come check your restaurant. So if you don't have that on your website, because you don't have a website just yet, since you're going to be having that in the next few weeks, take a photo of your menu or your menu board and upload them in all of your uh, your sites, you know, TripAdvisor, Yelp, all of that. Okay, these were five tips I had for you. Now, again, if this is, you're like, um, I don't, I'm not in a small town, it still works for you. If you're in a small town, it works for you as well. Partnering with schools, taking food to businesses and three to five mile radius of your restaurant. Did you see the word daily? You need to do that daily. I was actually doing reports, stats reports for our restaurant for last month, last month in the month of May, we took food and personally visited, no joke, 190 businesses. We have two restaurants and we have um, a lady her name is Deborah. She takes care of that for our business. We have somebody specific that does this and she takes cannolis. She takes pizzas to businesses in the three to five mile radius of our restaurants. We have two restaurants. So she does that between the two restaurants that we have. This is her job. This is her main job. She does some other stuff, but this is her main role. We stopped by 190 businesses last month. So got to get it done. You can't do 190. You can do 20 per month, you should be able to do that. You know what I mean? And you're, you're doing multiple um, multiple businesses in one trip. You know what I mean? You're spending two hours a day doing that. Get a team member to do it. If I were you, Jonathan, the first thing I would do is the hotels. You telling me that you guys in the summertime have a lot of tourists, get the hotels done, fix your um, Yelp and TripAdvisor, Google uh, places, upload a lot of photos, get that done, friend. These are not difficult. And um, you can get it done. And if you're still looking for more ideas, I have this brilliant guide, brilliant because we put that into practice and we've been able to over triple our sales in the last five years. It has been enormous amount of work and I have a lot of uh, sweat and blood and mostly blood. We've acquired all that knowledge. I've put it in a guide. I'm calling it like an ultimate restaurant marketing guide. It is free. You can just go grab it. If you just go to making dough show, dot com go grab that guide and uh well i want to hear from you i want to hear what do you which one of these you're going to put into practice jonathan i would love to hear from you specifically be sure to subscribe to the show so you don't miss any show and you can always say hello to me at making dough show at gmail.com i would love to hear from you and uh, now let's get back to work and make some dough bye <music>